Yeah, and I think the other thing is that a lot of times we just get excited, like, oh, that person will meet me, or oh, that speaking thing is there, or oh, this conference is there. And I think we feel like the world is not amenable to, to shifting times. And so I don't know your Miami situation, but the answer might have been, well, I'll fly in the night before, meeting will happen first thing in the morning, and I'll fly out on the 10 a.m. flight. And this way you're only – like I, I've done things where I've literally – flown overseas so like overnight to london you know seven hours land shower speak get back on the two o'clock p.m flight there and be home and not because i'm a maniac or or i'm trying to kill myself if there was something for me to do in london i would it's just for me i'd rather sit at home or i'd rather be moving than be sitting in a hotel for 10 12 hours waiting for a meeting when it just doesn't have to be that way now again it's not that sustainable as a strategy i don't recommend it like all the time pushing 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 you need to give yourself uh, the room to not get sick and not die on a plane and not get a you know an, an embolism or something but you know for me my theory is that i'm not going to sleep great in a hotel regardless it's not like being home and so if if there's a way for me to shorten especially obviously when it's business when it's family vacation other things i have no issue with it but in these cases a lot of times we tend to think the meeting is fixed and then we look for flights i just think reversing it it changes the game <laughs> When you travel for a vacation, you don't worry about a wrinkled shirt. But when you travel for business, being connected, being presentable, and not having dead batteries are true causes for concern. So get on board for some business travel hacks with your host, Brian Eisenberg. Well, sure. My name is Mitch Joel. And I'm the founder of Six Pixels Group, formerly spent close to two decades running um, a marketing agency, which is how you and I met a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. I travel a lot for business primarily now to do presentations and four meetings. Uh, and I do about 40 to 60 presentations a year all over the world. And that sees me on a lot of back and forth flights. <laughs> What do you wish you knew when you first started traveling for business that you now know? So like, think back to that first trip. What was it like? What's changed? Well, for sure, I didn't understand why people get into lounges. I thought originally it was because you had a business class ticket. I just didn't know. And I just didn't think it, it was fair, to be honest. I was like, I bought a ticket. It seems like my ticket cost a lot of money. I should be in there, too, and enjoying the, the comforts away from, uh, you know, when you're sort of waiting at the gate. And, you know, especially back then when the power was so limited, it still is, but it was even worse back then. So I guess the number one tip would be to get into those loyalty programs as fast as possible. Try and figure out, you know, where you're going to be flying to as frequently as you can and lock in the best carrier for that. It just so happens in my world, because I live in Canada, the limitations are, are pretty significant. So it's either Air Canada, Air Canada is part of Star Alliance, and that gives me access now to United. Before it was also um, Continental, but then there was that merger. So I primarily use choose an airline of, of choice, which would be anything within the Star Alliance family is, is where I would primarily go. The one exception being if I can get there direct, if I can get somewhere direct and avoid um, uh, that, that headache of connecting, then I'll, I'll fly whoever will take me there direct. What would you think your travel superpower is? I think my travel superpower comes from pre-planning. And when I tell people this trick slash what has developed into a superpower, it's sort of one of those da moments for people. Like, I can't believe I never thought of that or I can't believe I didn't initiate it. Um, so if you go back in time, a long time, over a decade when I started speaking, I also have a very young family. And as much as I love what I do professionally, I love my family more. And my whole thing is to be as present uh, in the family as much as possible. And I realized that would require some maneuvering in terms of getting in and out of places as fast as possible. As you know, a lot of times you could speak at noon and there's just not another flight till the next day. That is 24 plus hours of time to me that is away from family. And I don't like that. So my superpower is when I'm asked for a meeting, whether it's to speak or for business or anything, 
my first place that I go before responding, yes, yes or no, is to check out the flights. When I can organize the flights, I will then go back to them and say, that's workable for me if X, Y, and Z. If I can be in at this time, if you're okay with me flying in on the same day, if you're now, I recognize some people have jobs where they can't do that, but I would I would push back a little bit and say, more often than not, when you're traveling, most people can be accommodating because they know that travel is tough, and they don't necessarily know your reasoning for going in or out. And so, my, my sort of main thing was to always figure out the flights first so that I'm spending as little time as possible uh, dormant in, a, in another city when I can be home. Love it. <laughs> When uh, you plan these flights and, and you start thinking, uh, you know, what clothing you're going to take, and um, of course you're you're well known for uh, your one uh, general <laughs> outfit. Um, do you spend time planning out what you're going to tra- travel with? Uh, do do you pack, you know, that, that night of, or do you do kind of a last minute scramble? I'm a very prepared individual, so you're right. I'm I only wear black. Uh, people think it's a Johnny Cash thing. I let them go with that. The real reason I do this is because back when I was in my music days, I used to be a, a music writer and a publisher of music magazines. I just remember seeing the Metallica guys and how they'd like be on stage in black jeans and a black T-shirt, and then they'd go to the Grammys and they basically just throw a jacket over the T-shirt, you know, <laughs> and they looked formal. And black was just one of those colors that was just completely utilitarian. And for me. I just didn't want more choices in my life. And so, you know, all black jeans, all black shirts, off I go. I'm super prepared. I definitely pack uh, way before the last minute. I'm, I'm usually the night before. Uh, but really, it is just a question of how many days I'm packing for. And that's basically it. So there's not specific things. I have a specific way of packing and thinking about packing, but it's not about what goes in there. Uh, and because I tend to be able to use sneakers, I can use those to work out. So it's not like multiple pair of shoes. I, I very much am somebody who, if there's a piece of paper in the bag, I remove it. I want it to be as light as possible. That's probably my own sort of quirkiness where I just want it to be as light and as compact as possible, as little as I need. So, so tell me a little bit about, you know, your, 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 your packing, you know, any, any special kind of luggage you're using, any, any bags that are uh, your favorites, um, any special travel clothes. And, and you mentioned the sneakers. So, so, so what, what is it that you're wearing that, that kind of lets you go back and forth between being able to work out with it and obviously uh, use it in a business setting? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Skechers. I think that Skechers are also very, very utilitarian. They look good if you're sort of wearing more dress, dress pants, if you find the right model. Um, and, you, and you can use them to work out. They're just super comfortable. They've got that sort of yoga mat uh, stuff going on in the inside, which is great on the feet. In terms of clothes, I just like things that are super light. I'm always looking at, at, at sweaters, dress shirts, jeans even, that don't weigh a ton, that just have more of a lightness to them, especially because climates change too. I mean, I live in Canada, where it's really cold a lot of time. I'm usually traveling somewhere warmer. So I want to be able to have that sort of flexibility. In terms of packing, I'm looking for the exact same thing. So yeah, I'm very, very specific about the uh, the luggage that I use. My main uh, weapon of choice right now is a Briggs & Riley baseline rolling cabin bag, uh, which basically looks like one of those old uh, catalog briefcases sort of that size. The reason I like it is one, I think the the weight is really good. I always check the weight first because you got to remember there are limitations on planes. They, they will sometimes check it and, and weigh it. Um, and my whole theory is that, you know, if the bag is, let's say 10 pounds and you can get one that's seven, that's basically three more pounds of your own stuff you can bring rather than just the sort of durability of the bag. So I find this Briggs & Riley bag great, especially because even when you're on the little pond jumper planes, that bag can go under the seat while your briefcase or, or whatever your, your other knapsack can go overhead. So I, I, I literally do not gate check anymore, which is another huge metric for me in terms of uh, what, what I'm k- taking with me. Um, the way that I make the efficiency of that bag work, and I can basically do three nights with that bag, which is, you know, it's an overnight bag, so that's quite a bit, um, is because of a couple of things that I use. Uh, Eagle Creek has a packet specter garment folder, which basically looks like at the gap, those things that they use to fold the clothes, but it's got a very, very soft shell, and that's the specter part of it. It's almost like a K-way, like lightweight material. And that allows you to fold multiple shirts and then sort of use the Velcro that holds it together to push it down. And also it doesn't wrinkle your shirts. So you can really pack in, you know, I can do like three dress shirts in that with my dress jacket and still have plenty of room. 
Eagle Creek also has in their packet specter um, uh, format uh, cubes. And I was never a cube fan until a couple of years ago. Uh, and, and the reason is I just thought, well, it's extra stuff. Like it's just cubes, just roll up your stuff and put it in. And yes, rolling is a huge time saver, but the, the specter packets actually have a compression feature on them. So you sort of fill the little cube up and then there's a zipper that compresses it and pushes the stuff all the way down. So I use that for underwear, uh, undershirts, things like that. And so basically if you open up my bag, it's, you know, Two, maybe three rolled up pairs of pants, one packet specter that's got all my shirts and dress jacket in there. Then it's got one bigger cube that's got all my underwear, socks, and undershirts rolled up in there. Done. I mean, it really looks like there's almost like nothing in this bag, and there's like four days, three nights of stuff in there. And again, this the secret or trick for me is to make sure it's it's as light as possible. Um, so I, I like to refer to uh, the, you know, your personal item or your, your carry-on, uh, almost like uh, our sanity bags for yeah, travel. For sure. yeah. um, so if we were to take that bag uh, and uh, inspect it, uh, what, what kinds of things would we find in there besides you know, gadgets and maybe snacks? What, what, what are we looking at? Yeah, well, I, I think first probably good to tell you which bag I use because I'm I'm like as you can tell I'm I'm sort of like uh, you, you know if, if you have a, a wife, spouse, or girlfriend that loves handbags, I'm the equivalent only mail and knapsacks and and that so I'm a big believer of of using the knapsack, not the the carry on. I you know had a back issue for a while, but then as I get older, I just I just love to be able to just have stuff where my hands are free. Um, I used to be a big fan. I still am of the eBags professional slim laptop backpack. I think you, Brian, were using that one too. I very recently discovered a brand that I'm totally in love with for the bag. Um, and it is a knapsack format. It's a company called Walter and Ray. It's actually an individual. She lives, I think in the West coast and it's a, it's a brilliant bag. Uh, the reason I love this bag so much is she, the woman designed this with the attitude of most briefcases or backpacks that we use is about getting a computer from where you are to where you're going, an office. This bag is built for in transit. So you can imagine for people who travel like you and I, it's like a complete game changer from how it stands up to how you access the the pockets, to how many pockets there are, to how it clips on, to having hidden pockets. Um, It's an unknown brand. It's very, very new, but it's called Walter and Ray. I totally love it. Um, what's in there that's surprising. I'm not sure there's anything that's surprising. I'm very, very specific about, uh, the stuff and keeping stuff compartmentalized. I think the biggest sort of thing for me is the, um, I have something similar to a roomy bag, uh, which is R U M E. And it's basically like, it almost looks like a big pencil case and it's got three zippers on it. Uh, and I love this bag. I have, I literally keep everything in there from, your wires to your adapters, to your headphones, to your dongles for your, your your computer to connect to projectors, to your power savers. And so, again, I, it, when you open it up, it's very clean because all of this stuff is compartmentalized in this one bag. For those who live in Canada, the, the big Dollarama stores up here actually sell what I consider to be a better bag than the Rumi one. And it's like three bucks and it comes in multiple colors, but I love those multi zip pockets. You know, like my first one keeps my remote presenters in there. The second one has all my dongles and then the sort of big hollowed out one has, you know, the, 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 the car adapter, uh, headphones, extra USB cables, whatever it might be. Um, that's probably most surprising because most people's bags, when you open it, it becomes like this sort of snake coil of, of cables that just explodes out of it. Mine's really, really organized for that. What is your favorite travel hack? Well, I mean, for sure, the one I told you previously would be my favorite one, calling and getting your flights uh, first. That would be, you know, w- without a doubt, the biggest one. Um, the other travel hack, I guess, is when it comes to booking the flight, a lot of people sort of wait it out. When when I get confirmed, I actually book the flight right away. The reason being seat selection. Um, I, I find that, you know, I am very specific. I want to sit as close to the front as possible. Um, I don't really like the bulkhead anymore because of the way of travel. I'd like to be able to shoot stuff underneath the chair, but I do like the aisle. And I, I often get frustrated when something comes up last minute and I look at the flights or seats. I'm like, oh, the other thing is when you book your flight later, you, you may not realize it. There might have been other flight choices that either got canceled or the system changed them. So 
that. I would tie that into also checking flights on Google Flights. Um, Google Flights basically shows you everything, not just what the airline or independent airline wants you to see. And there's usually options on there that are super surprising to me that I would have never thought of or, or connected to. And then the sort of tie into that in terms of the physicality of traveling is never check your bag. Um, I can't tell you how many times there's been a change or I got somewhere early or I wanted to go somewhere and had my bag been checked, those games would not have been able to been afoot. Thank you for listening to Business Travel Hacks with your host, Brian Eisenberg. Catch us on the web at businesstravelhacks.com or at Business Travel Hacks on Facebook and Instagram. What's the best lesson you've learned about business travel in your 20 years of traveling? Nexus global entry and tie that into uh, build loyalty and you will get as little of the airport on you in your experience as possible. Just the ability to move through both security, customs, and, and away from the gates to me is the best lesson learned just to make it efficient. When I don't see that TSA approved thing on my ticket, I, I howl in agony. <laughs>